Hey everyone, here's a remarkable thought for you. Four years ago, if the Brexit referendum had gone the other way, then this would be the final week of David Cameron's five-year term as Prime Minister, and the UK would be about to undertake a 2020 election, assuming that coronavirus didn't mean it got delayed along with the football season, the Olympics, and my eventual plan to one day tidy the cupboard under the stairs. One day, Calvin, one day. As it is, we've had multiple elections, two Prime Ministers, and the Covid thing, which I guess has made Dave Cameron think twice about ever going near a bat or a pig again. Remember that thing about the pig? But I digress, Dave instead spent the past five years inside his shed watching Amazon and listening to podcasts. In some respects, I guess we're all Dave Cameron now, thanks to the lockdown. All I have to do is wait for the pub to reopen so I can leave one of my kids there. Coronavirus, though, we're now into month four of this, and ironically, it's about four months into a military siege that you start having to eat the wild animals, and the zoo becomes a market like that one in China. The big story this week has been the moves to reopen parts of the economy, and that was a topic that Elon Musk was asked about on a conference call with investors. He proceeded to answer that particular question using the sort of language that would make a sailor blush. You'd think he'd save those kind of words for when he stubbed his toe, or maybe after he realised he left his wallet in the glove box of that car he sent into space two years ago as part of a publicity stunt. The facts do seem to be that Sweden's approach has been working though, and if you separate the New York statistics, then the rest of America actually has one of the lowest per capita rates in the world. My guess is that there's some kind of genetic or demographic aspect of this that they're keeping very secret from us all, in the same way that most of the health experts on the BBC want to keep their political leanings secret. You know, when a doctor's involvement in political activism is kept more confidential than the records of his patients, then you can trust that interview to be about as honest as one where a child covered in chocolate denies knowing where the Cadbury went. Nonetheless, politicians are drawn to power in much the same way that Diane Abbott is drawn towards the bakery in Tesco, and this petty scramble for power is never more true than with local government officials. No mayor or state governor wants to relinquish power. The economy will always come second to their heightened fame and celebrity status, and what we're seeing now is what happens when mediocre people get given omnipotent powers as the country dies. And if people wanted the government to destroy the economy for neglect and malice, then they would have elected Jeremy Corbyn, and they very much chose not to. Anyway, see you next week if you like these. Click subscribe.